United Nations court ruled Tuesday that China doesn't own 90% of the South China Sea as it's been claiming for decades. China has asserted a nine-dash line that has claimed large areas of the South China Sea since the end of World War II. Much of the zone is a lot closer to other Asian countries than to China. The regime has said the Chinese people have over 2,000 years of activity in the area, giving the country historic rights. The Philippines first brought China to a UN tribunal in 2013, and now the court has ruled China has no historic rights at all. The country has no legal claim to vast amounts of the Nine Dash Line, including all seven artificial islands China has built that are capable of military use. The court has also ruled against China's claims of an economic monopoly over large parts of the sea. In fact, it found China has been intruding on other countries' legitimate rights to control resources. It's a lot for Beijing to lose. The South China Sea holds a massive amount of oil and gas reserves, as well as some of the world's most vital shipping lanes. The world's two superpowers, the United States and China, are already clashing over an international tribunal's ruling on the South China Sea dispute. China refuses to accept it, but the U.S. says it's final and legally binding, and all related countries should abide by it. The ruling on the South China Sea dispute is final and legally binding on both China and the Philippines. This was the U.S. reaction to the tribunal ruling in The Hague Tuesday, which brought victory to the Philippines, which filed the case three years ago, as well as other Southeast Asian countries involved in increasingly tense maritime disputes with Beijing. U.S. State Department spokesperson John Kirby said the U.S. hopes and expects that China and the Philippines will comply with their obligations. He called for all parties to refrain from provocative statements or actions, expressing hope that the ruling will be an opportunity to deal with disputes in a peaceful manner from here on. Kirby said the U.S. has persistent concerns about China's militarization of the South China Sea. We have seen some signs uh, uh, in recent weeks that some of that activity uh, continues, uh, and we have been, again, very consistent, very clear uh, with our Chinese counterparts uh, about uh, our ongoing concerns uh, in, in, that, in that regard. China's claims to the widely contested South China Sea are being scrutinized for the first time by an international legal body. The ruling is due to be delivered in the next few hours, and it isn't expected to make pretty reading for Beijing. Preempting the ruling, the Chinese government has reportedly raised the stakes to a new level. Chinese President Xi Jinping has reportedly ordered the People's Liberation Army to prepare for combat. This comes ahead of an international tribunal on Tuesday that's expected to issue an unfavorable ruling against China's claims over the South China Sea. U.S.-based Paul Jin Yu said Tuesday that the instruction was given in case the United States takes provocative action in the waters once the ruling is made. The U.S. and China have been expanding their military activities across the sea, stoking heavy tension between the two superpowers. The Yinchuan is China's force guided missile destroyer, fitted with the latest in military hardware, outstanding stealth performance, and the state-of-the-art striking capabilities. It is capable of sinking any naval ships or submarines. Meanwhile, an independently developed Chinese frigate is also docked in Shanghai, the 120-meter-long warship, is equipped with the latest military weaponry and can be used for both attack and defense. A Russian military helicopter shot down by ISIS over Syria was blown out of the sky with American-made weaponry, according to a Russian military source. The source told Interfax News Agency that the ISIS fighters hit the Russian Mi-25 assault helicopter with a U.S.-built tow heavy anti-tank missile a high-tech weapon that uses guidance from a ground station. In the latest escalation of tensions between Washington and Tehran, five Iranian military vessels maneuvered extremely close to a U.S. warship carrying a top American general just six months after two U.S. ships were detained by Iran. The ships, 
which were dispatched to the Strait of Hormuz by Iran's elite Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC on Monday, came within 500 yards 457 meters of the USS New Orleans and its escort, the USS Stout, a guided missile destroyer, according to Reuters. The Iranian fleet consisted of four speedboats, three of which had mounted machine guns, and a guided missile patrol ship. In the first encounter, a Houdon fast attack craft, one of the largest operated by the IRGC, passed closely by the ship, the Wall Street Journal reported. Later, the four smaller patrol craft approached the USS New Orleans as it moved through the strait. One of the Iranian boats cut off its engine and floated past both of the U.S. vessels as its crew filmed the sailors aboard the warships. The USS New Orleans was carrying about 650 Marines, as well as Army General Joseph Otel, who oversees all American military forces in the Middle East. Although U.S. officials stressed to Reuters that such events fall within the category of professional interactions. Seoul and Washington are monitoring the North's nuclear test site where a high level of activity has been detected. South Korea, well aware that the communist state is always ready to conduct another test, warned that such a move will bring the regime even stronger sanctions and greater isolation from the rest of the world. A high level of activity has been detected at North Korea's Punggye nuclear test site. U.S.-based North Korea monitoring website, 38 North, says commercial satellite imagery from July 7th shows supplies and equipment stacked on the ground at the North Portal, where the third and fourth nuclear tests were conducted. It said a small vehicle is present at the support building south of the portal, and that several mine carts may also be present, suggesting the tunnel is actively being worked. The website says, however, that it's not possible to determine if the activity is for maintenance, excavation, or preparation for a fifth nuclear test due to the image resolution. Germany's Chancellor has, for the first time, publicly acknowledged that extremists could be taking advantage of the migrant influx to enter Europe. Over the past year, Angela Merkel's been repeatedly warned about the security risks of her open-door policy. There are a number of terrorists who grew up in Europe, in Germany as well, who were then trained in Syria and came back, in part, even using the refugee flow to smuggle in terrorists. Those who flee misery, war, political oppression, we are responsible for helping them whether we want to or not. The German Chancellor's words have surprised many, particularly since it was her who invited migrants and refugees to come to Germany and Europe. Merkel, we love Merkel. She did enjoy the plaudits, though, even posing for the odd selfie. Despite repeated warnings from, well, pretty much everybody, we heard from Interpol, we heard from Europol, we also heard from um, the German security services themselves saying that there was a potential risk. And in fact, the German equivalent of the FBI in the United States had said that as far as they knew, there were dozens of people um, who had come into Europe, had come into Germany as potential ISIS sleeper cells. Even warnings from her international partners were still ignored. Europe faces the daunting challenge of mass migration, masking the movements of criminals, terrorists, and foreign fighters. Within this mix, ISIL or Daesh is spreading like a cancer.
In the meantime tonight, to tense moments in the nation's capital late today, a lockdown on Capitol Hill after three suspects in a car opened fire on police during a car chase. This video shows the moment the suspects were taken into custody. Authorities say one of the three fired a machine gun at police during the pursuit. The suspect then dropped the automatic weapon in a tunnel before the chase came to an end. The chase triggering that lockdown. No officers were injured. Now to a developing headline tonight. The urgent search right now for a serial shooter in the Phoenix area. Police now linking at least seven deaths, eight shootings to the same suspect or suspects. And tonight, a new reward. The victims apparently chosen at random in front of homes. Tonight, Phoenix police on high alert on the hunt for a serial killer or killers after recently linking four more incidents to a string of shootings. In all, seven people have been killed. The youngest victim, just 12 years old. The person that is doing this is wicked. There's something wrong with them. The shootings started in March, first focused in West Phoenix, but now a total of eight. Police say spanning nearly 100 square miles, putting thousands of residents in danger. Police telling ABC News in each case, the shooter or shooters opened fire on a weekend night in front of a home where cars were parked. In these incidents, uh, the motive is not apparent at all. Happening today in the House of Representatives, the hearing is looking at religious freedom and same-sex marriage. It's being called the First Amendment Defense Act. It could let businesses choose if they want to serve same-sex couples. News 4's Ellie Ingersoll is in Elmwood Village with what people are saying about it. A congressional hearing is looking to answer the question whether businesses can refuse to serve same-sex couples under the protection of the First Amendment. The plan would allow business owners and organizations with sincerely held religious beliefs or moral convictions about marriage to be able to deny same-sex couples service. It's called the Religious Liberty and First Amendment Defense Act. If passed, the government wouldn't be able to act against a person or organization standing behind their belief of a traditional marriage. Republican Representative Raul Labrador wrote the measure, saying it reinforces the First Amendment's right to practice religious freedom, while those against it say it promotes discrimination against same-sex couples. You should be able to go wherever without being discriminated against. Um, if it's a public business that's um, open to anyone and available for anyone to walk in, uh, your gender, sex, anything to do with that should not have any bearing on whether or not you're allowed to partake in the business. Anybody um, of any sex or religion or whatever your preference is should be able to eat wherever or dine anywhere you want. I mean, that's, that's what our country... I mean, it's, it's, it's what it, we, we live on and what I was raised to believe. The plan remains in the House Ways and Means Committee. There's a similar bill in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Between 2011 and 2014, Greenland shed 1 trillion tons of ice. That's according to new data from the European Space Agency. The ice loss in those four years alone corresponds to a 0.75 millimeter contribution to global sea level rise each year about twice the average of the preceding two decades. The latest data was gathered using the space agency's CERO satellite, combined with a regional climate model to map changes in Greenland's ice sheet mass. CEROSAT carries a radar altimeter that can measure the surface height variation of ice in fine detail, allowing scientists to record changes in its volume with unprecedented accuracy. According to the researchers, it's the most detailed picture to date of ice loss in Greenland.